Hello, welcome back for another video on Ark Survival Ascended. And as promised, I'll be diving into another modded showcase. Over the last two weeks, I have been discovering, learning, and playing a wide variety of overhaul mods. So in this video, I will be showcasing five overhaul mods you need to try in Ark Survival Ascended. Let's get straight into it. Kicking things off, we have Prime Evil from the modder Purger's Empress. Prime Evil is an overhaul mod which adds different dinosaur classes and bosses and adds a wide variety at that. And most have massively boosted stats when compared to vanilla creatures, being much faster, stronger and deadly. Which you'll find is a very common thing when looking at these overhaul mods. Because let's be honest, tame vanilla creatures would have no chance against mythical beasts like these. There are six tiers of wild tameable creatures, rookie being the weakest, advanced, plantivora, badass, guardian and tormentor. With tormentor and guardians being the strongest tiers. And from my experience most can be tamed by the usual knockout methods. The mod comes with of its own unique fresh progression system added a bunch of new craftable items consumables and structures which just like vanilla arc you'll have to progress to higher tiers of trank arrows narcotics and you name it to tame more powerful creatures with the goal of taking down the wide variety of bosses included in the mod the mod also adds a wide variety of new resources which will play a vital role in your progression through the mod where you have to hunt harvest thrive and survive to obtain them when using the primeval workbench these these resources are used to craft summoning engrams, where you can either summon tame creatures like the badass wyvern. You'll definitely feel like you return back to Ark's glory days when you witness the base movement speed of this wyvern. A tameable badass giga can also be summoned, which can be knocked out and tamed just like a vanilla giga, and any of the many bosses included in the mod. These engrams once crafted, once used in your inventory, will summon that boss onto the map, right in front of you, so be ready. These bosses will also drop more important resources, allowing you to progress even more so. For example, summon golems can be harvested for bronze, silver ore and more, which can be refined into ingots using a primeval forge. These bosses are not to be underestimated. Even when you think you've tamed the most powerful, deadly and unstoppable dinosaur on the arc, and you're there thinking nothing can stop me now, well, think again. All it takes is one teeny little Triceratops boss named Shield Face, who hits like a brick by the way, to crush all your hopes and dreams where you'll go from the top to the bottom in an instant. This mod is a ton of fun, extremely challenging and there's a lot to dip your feet into, which can give you a fresh experience when playing Ark. Moving on we have Dino Overhaul X. 2. Highly regarded as the hardest mod in ARK from the modder Equalizer 04. It can be played cross-platform, which is villainous. Dino Overhaul X is a hardcore survival mod that will challenge even the most veteran of ARK players, with wild creatures being far faster and stronger, and spawning at higher levels. Every dinosaur and creature has been individually rebalanced with completely new taming mechanics. For example, the majority of herbivores can be tamed passively via kibble or other preferred foods and carnivores like the t-rex is tamed very similar to the carcharodontosaurus or other predators requiring fertilized eggs to tame you'll be needing to trap it and throw down some of your tasty fertilized eggs but what really gives docs its unique feel is its unique and immersive trait system it is a little complicated and i'm no expert by any means but this is what makes it so good every wild creature will have random traits they can either be good traits or bad traits all dinos gain permanent natural and artificially given traits which will enhance or detract overall effectiveness of the creature itself. This makes breeding even more important and you guessed it, even more complicated. These traits can also be paired with powerful pygmies. Pygmies are basically tiny creatures that look like babies in the wild and can be easily identified by a purple star above them. These can be tamed by having pygmy kibble in your final hotbar slot. When stood next to the pygmy, it will eat the kibble straight off your hotbar with a chance of being able to tame it. And once tamed, you can pick it up and put it on your shoulder. By accessing its inventory, you can see it has its own buffs, which of course once on your shoulder and once riding any creature will give that creature extra traits and buffs. Or maybe even debuffs if you got a bad roll on your pygmy. Gaining permanent traits require the art of combat. So you have to take your tames out, battle them against other dinos. In the process, your dino will gain temporary traits, which can either help or hurt you in battle. This will also give your creature a rare chance of gaining a permanent trait. And typically, these temporary 
temporary traits that you gain when out fighting will make battle extremely challenging. As your teams gain more and more traits over time, evolution will become available. I haven't reached this stage in the game yet, so I'm not really certain on how it all works. It's a really complicated process and I'm massively learning the ropes, but eventually over time your dino's power skill and experience will prepare you for battle against primes and megas, which are basically world mini bosses that spawn over the map. And yep, once again they hit like an absolute brick. They will obliterate stone, as they can damage every type of structure. Once defeated, Megas will drop a ton of loot, element and genetic strings. Defeating, gaining and harnessing the power of a Mega can potentially make your tames unstoppable. Of course that is easier said than done. Working your way up through the mod and progressing to the point where you're ready to take down the main world boss of the map, which is Kong and he is the king of the island. Having a massive health pool throwing gigantic boulders or launching massive spears further than any Olympian could ever dream of. So you'll most likely need an army of beefy traded up tames to take him down. Dox is an extremely immersive mod adding so much uniqueness to the game and I could promise you you'll be addicted in no time at all. I highly recommend joining the Dox discord server and checking out the channel ASA guide link and everything you need to know about the mod will be included in this spreadsheet. I mean even after reading this spreadsheet I'm still very overwhelmed one with the mechanics of this mod, but that is the beauty of docks in Ark Survival Ascended. The next overhaul mod on the list is going to be Primal Chaos, a similar mod to Prime Evil from the modder Mr. Chaos. This mod can be played cross-platform and will fill your world with a wide variety of mythical beasts and bosses, which are best avoided unless you have the right tools to tangle with them. These creatures can spawn up to a whopping level 600 in the wild. Similar to Prime Evil, this mod will introduce a wide range of tiers that will feature distinct progression, including a bunch of new structures, items and more. Adding a new range of kibbles to tame different tiers of creatures in the wild. Pairing that with trank progression, where you need to unlock better tiers of tranks for better tiers of creatures. All the narcotics you'll be needing to keep these creatures asleep. And of course all these mods are completely new to me, I've never really tried overhaul mods before. And from my experience most creatures wandering the wild can be tamed via knockout methods and just by dropping their preferred kibble into their inventory. And I must say, I'd never thought I'd see the day where I'd be riding a giant mythical jaboa. Oh, look Look at that cute little face, kinda. Like, I mean, can life really get any better than this? Almost everything included in the mod can be crafted at the Primal Chaos Workbench or by using the Primal Chaos Forge, where you have to thrive and survive, hunt and retrieve resources, and undoubtedly die a load of times. To be able to succeed in completing this mod, and to succeed, you will have to take down the world bosses, which are the Volcanic Guardian, the Electric Guardian, and the Hydro Guardian. They can either be summoned or will spawn at level 1 on the map, but don't let that fool you, they have millions of health. There are also nightmare bosses that can either be summoned and will spawn on the map naturally. I'm not sure if this is intended or not, but this is how the dinos look when I quickly go into photo mode and they look really cool, but in reality they have loads of smoke like pixels all over the screen, you can't even see them and it's really hard to look at, especially when they move at like 100 miles an hour. I'm not sure if that's just my graphics settings or it's something to do with the mod, but hopefully this will get fixed over time if that is the case. Either way, once again, Primal Chaos is extremely challenging, extremely fun, and I'm really looking forward to getting down to business and playing a load more of it myself. Up next we have Ark Prime X, from the modders Nephus and Agent X mods. Similar to some of the previous instalments on the list, Prime X adds its own unique selection of creature tiers, including Prime Creatures, Venom Creatures, Flame Creatures, Thunder Creatures, Colossal Creatures, Sun Creatures, Moon Creatures and Unique Creatures, most of which can be tamed via typical knockout methods or via passive hand feeding. Creatures are, however, not tamed with kibble this time, they are tamed with different different tiers of treats, but it still works the same as kibble, by being placed in an unconscious creature's inventory or by having it equipped in your last hotbar slot to passive feed. And just like previous mods, it adds a nice selection of new items, including different tiers of tranks, narcotics, a variety of different weapons, tools that can be used for different purposes, and a nice set of flame armor, just to name a few. It will also add the Primex Workbench, Primex Transmitter, Primex Forge, and a boss terminal to summon the boss of the map. So you 
probably don't want to put that in your base. Evolution is also a feature within Prime X, but of course it's very different to the way you evolve creatures in docks. There are a number of creatures you can evolve in Prime X. Let's take a look at the Titana Burr for example. Of course I'll have to go out and tame one first. When accessing the Titana Burr's inventory, this option can be seen. Whenever creatures have this option in their inventory, this will indicate they can be evolved. So from looking at the genetic manipulation blueprint, we will need 800 flame blood and 800 flame hide, which is pretty easy to get and can be harvested from flame creatures in the wild. And we also need 50 dissolved basilisk DNA, which is a bit of a grind to find. So if we just head over to the Primex workbench, click the dissolve tab, and this is where you can craft your dissolved DNA. To craft the basilisk DNA, we need two altered venom boa DNA, and this is just for one. This means you have to go out and kill a lot of venom titana boas and grab their DNA from their inventory. Be sure to stockpile your DNA before crafting the dissolved DNA, as dissolved DNA cannot be refrigerated and has a very quick spore timer of 20 minutes. Once you have wiped out the population of venom boas and crafted up 50 dissolved basilisk DNA, your titana boa is ready to evolve. Stick all the required resources in its inventory, craft up the blueprint and let evolution do its thing. I must admit I was a little confused at first, as I thought I was going into a boss fight with nothing but my wits. But lo and behold, shortly after, my titana boa transformed into a flame basilisk. So what was once a big snake has now become an even bigger snake. And that's pretty much how evolution works in this mod. It's pretty cool. Hologram dinos will also spawn in the wild, which can be harvested for small amounts of rare resources. And to my knowledge, there is only currently one modded boss that can be summoned from the Primex boss terminal, which is the Nightmare Reaper. You will have to craft a summoning token, and just like previous mods on the list, once consumed in your inventory, will spawn the boss onto the map. And although it appears to be the size of a juvenile reaper, it does pack a punch and has 6 million health. So no doubt you'll still need an army to take it down. And from reading the mod description, there will be more bosses added over time. The mod does seem to get frequent updates, so there's lots to look forward to. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out Prime X. The fifth overhaul mod I wanted to showcase is Primitive Ascended, which was recently revealed by the modder Blitzfire911. This mod has not been released yet. It was stated that him and his team are aiming for a July release date, so it's not playable right now. However, I believe this is going to be one of the best overhaul mods Arc Ascended will ever see. I was a massive fan of Primitive Plus when it came to Arts of Isle Evolve, and it was a massive shame that it never got the love it deserved. Primitive Ascended is on a whole nother level, adding completely new mechanics mechanics to the game and a whole bunch of new features we've never seen before, including goblin NPCs, which apparently will be explained later on. So you can recruit these companions, face against enemy factions, so it looks like NPCs will be a massive thing in this mod, which is great. As a PvE player, I feel like a lot of us will be salivating at the mouth for any kind of NPCs included in the game. And who knows what else the team has got cooking up in the kitchen. The mod appears to be adding hundreds of new structures, new variations of primitive tools and speaking of cooking in the kitchen we'll add a new range of cooking systems allowing you to craft a bunch of new recipes you can't complain about that and from watching the trailer it's evident there's going to be so much more to explore see and do in the world of primitive ascended but this mod has got me so hyped i can't stop thinking about it i've always been a massive enjoyer of the primitive side of arc and honestly this is something i've been waiting for for so many years and i cannot express how hyped i am about it i cannot wait I will leave a link to the trailer in the description of the video and in a pinned comment. So definitely go show Blitzfire 911 and that video some love. And before we close out the video, there was one mod that I wanted to give a special honourable mention to, which is Primal Survival from the modder Feral Games Studio and K9 TVs. It does add a small variety of new structures and items, but to me there wasn't enough to take this mod to the top. But I did like the style of some of the weapons, and supply drops were designed to look like small abandoned encampments. But what stood out the most with this mod to me was the introduction of deadly weather events. And honestly, these mechanics kind of wowed me. I would 100% love to see this within Vanilla Arc. It does add a wide variety of storms, including sandstorms, meteor showers, which I have heard upon direct impact can damage structures. And who knows what else? I was attempting to headbutt one with my character, but it turns out that's very difficult to do. More storms include lightning storms, eclipse, which I'm not really sure about. 
out, as I already can't see anything at night time as it is. The Blood Moon, which admittedly I'm not really sure how it all works, but I know once one occurs, event creatures will spawn on the map, including Blood Bats, the Blood Bear, the Blood Wolf, the Blood Gorilla, and apparently a Blood Type boss, which will only spawn during this weather event. Unfortunately, I was not able to find one myself, so honestly, I have no idea what it is. So who knows, maybe that'll give you more incentive to try this mod. And the final weather event, which is my favourite by far, which is going to be the snowstorm. And this was the icing on the cake for me. It is amazing. I never thought I'd see the day that I'd see the island map covered in snow. Of course, it's still a temporary event, so it does not stay like this. And we'll revert back to the sunny island that we're all used to. But this this one really did make me take a big step back and literally sit there looking absolutely gobsmacked and that is going to be the end of the video i've been playing these mods for two weeks straight discovering all the nooks and crannies and as much information as i possibly can find through my own gameplay so it's taken a long time to make this video so if you found it helpful in any way or enjoyed the video please feel free to like comment share and subscribe it would really help me out and i really appreciate it be sure to check out the mods and the modders themselves and show them all some love i will leave links to their discord servers in the link in the description of the video and in the pinned comment which is the best way to find all the information that you need to know about these mods hope you're all having a great week i'll catch you on the next one take care goodbye